the best possible finish cutting aluminum. That's the topic of today's video. So how can we get from a standard machine surface that looks typically like this to something that is more a shiny or mirror-like finish looking like that? So if you follow my channel, then you have seen several of my surface finishes. I like to show you one here. This is our starting point. I made this with a Datron single fluid end mill. Um, yeah, and that is a good technical surface. It feels good, it looks good. And let's see how we can make that better. This is a tool I'm going to use. It's actually for steel, but in this case it'll work. And my workflow is that I first measure the tool length itself. So make a tool length offset right here on my probe on a stationary position. Then I take the probe and I place it onto the top surface of the part. So Z0 will be on top of the part. And then just zero that out so that we can later on go down precisely by, yeah, in some cases just hundreds of a millimeter. So start the program. And just, I think here I take like maybe like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter off the top surface. So here you see 16,000 RPM, a step over of 80%. Uh, 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter depth of cut and a feed rate of one meter per minute. Now this gives a respectable surface. We can hardly see the reflection of the Sharpie pen and it feels very smooth with your finger, but it's just nothing special. Next, we have a 16 millimeter tool holder with a special aluminum insert. If you like to get a better surface finish, then I have some general tips for you. Tip number one is check the spindle trim. If your spindle trim is out, forget it. You cannot get a good surface finish. You will always dish out the surface or have some staircasing going on. I made a video about that. Uh, leave your card right there if you need help with that. Next one is I like you to get some type of lubrication system on your machine. Now this is the JB Works Cool Mister right here and you can get that or a building plan on my website. So when we are using carbide tooling, go ahead and turn the lubricant on as well, so air and lubricant. But if we are machining with PCD or MCD tooling, you don't really need the coolant at all. You can just use an air blast to get the chips out of the way so we don't reshoe them, that's important. Yeah, so get a cool mister. Point 0.1 millimeter depth of cut, definitely an improvement to the regular steel insert. You can now read the word Sharpie in the left side of the part. On the right hand side is a bit unique to my machine, what's going on there. Also, I'd like to point out that the step over of 65% is low, 80 would be better. So this is the point zero three or three hundredths of a millimeter depth of cut and I don't think it is making actually a big difference to the 0.1 millimeter that we had before. I tried to find a parameter that gives me a better surface so I alternate the depth of cut here between 0.1 and 0.03 millimeter, three hundredths the feed rate between 800 millimeter and 1.2 millimeter. I think one time I already went down to 400 millimeter per minute, but I don't really see that the surface is giving much of a response or that there is a big change how it looks like. So I think this is what we can expect from an insert for aluminum. Tip number three has to do with vibration. So we need to eliminate all possible vibration in your system. So that means, for example, if an axis is moving and you hear a noise from the motor on that axis, let's say it's a badly tuned servo motor. For me, I learned this in this exercise here that my surface finish in the Y axis, so in the long axis, is way worse than it is when I move X only. And I think that has to do with my motor tuning. So Y is just not quite as quiet, so to speak. The motors hum a little bit when I go slowly and I can definitely tell that I can see those vibrations as artifacts in a mirror finished surface. The next is that I like you to measure the runout on your tool if you have difficulties and possibly get a higher quality collet. 
So a collet can cause a bad run out and that will also cause the tool to oscillate and you will see that in your surface finish. Now, when it comes to balancing, so unbalanced balanced, um, items that rotate on your spindle, like the spindle nut, for example, or the tool can cause vibration. So see that you get a balanced tool and also a balanced collet nut. The polycrystalline diamond insert. You will always see a black cutting edge and that is very typical. That's the telltale sign and giveaway that it is a PCD insert. So right away I noticed one thing. This is a 0.1 millimeter cut and with the PCD insert it makes way less noise. The sound is completely different than with the aluminum insert and I have a hunch that the surface finish is also going to look much better, which we can see here now the first idea. Uh, it looks way shinier than before. So let's see how this performs. One of the things diamond tooling is known for is how sharp the cutting edge is. And therefore we can take a much, much lighter cut. Here you see one one hundredth of a millimeter. Now with the monocrystalline diamond, there are cuts that I know of some machines can perform that are to a micrometer. So we're talking about maybe two thousandths of a millimeter. And there's not much rubbing going on and therefore we can make such small chips. So here you see me changing uh, the direction of the cut again because I'm not happy with the cut quality. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the PCD tooling. So I change out the material to a block which is actually casted just to see if I can get a different surface. But what you see right here is as good as it's going to get and I'm going to leave it with this. Next up is the monocrystalline diamond. So whenever we see a single crystal that is yellow we know that we have a monocrystalline diamond. And I'm very excited to try out this tool and they are expensive by the way. So the cut you see right here is actually the second cut. The first cut I just lower the tool into the material. I don't use a tool length sensor for diamond tooling. That's just something I don't do. And therefore what you see right here is a second cut on this block with this tool and it is a depth of cut of three hundredths of a millimeter. And you can already see how shiny that surface is. Here I changed the RPM from 18,000 to 24,000. And actually just subsequently with all of the rest of the cuts, what I try to do is change one parameter at a time. Here you see 24,000 RPM and then from 800 down to 400 millimeters per minute. That is this cut right here, 18,400 meters per minute, uh, millimeters per minute. And then I make the same cut one more time with 1.6 meters per minute. So double the 800 that I initially had. And I'm really, really happy with this particular cut. And I think I'm gonna leave it Still with this right here. Awesome, you can see the reflection of the spindle up here. Um, it's amazing, I think. And look at the Sharpie. So the main takeaway from this test for me is that I don't really like to invest into polycrystalline diamond tooling, I think. That um, it, it's not worth it. The comparison between carbide versus polycrystalline is just, okay, the tool life is longer, but besides that, for my router it makes no sense. Maybe on the lace it's good. However, the monocrystalline, the MCD tooling, oh wow, what a difference we have seen there. And I think for one or the other project, I would love to have a tool, but uh, also, you know, double check. It's, it's a fun project if you want to check your machine out, uh, how good of a surface it can really make. So I enjoyed this whole thing. All right, so that's it for this video and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.